guys, it's Mr. Cahoon. Today I'm going to show you how to make a sign or how to design a sign on Adobe Illustrator. And then when you're done, you can take it to the laser, cut those pieces out, and glue them to another board. So let's get started. We're going to open up a new file on Adobe Illustrator. So click File, New. And when you get here, click on Art and Illustration up at the top. And you can name it whatever you want. I'll name this Cahoon Sign. Now, I'm going to do a, a family sign, but you don't have to. You could do anything. You could do a brand name that you like um, or anything. So pick what you want to do. And right here, we're going to change the points to inches because I want to know how many inches. I want to know how big this sign is going to be. And at this point, it would be a good idea to figure that out, you know, to maybe cut a piece out the size that you want it and then you can put the dimensions for that piece in here. So I'm going to do something like 18 inches wide and maybe 9 inches tall. Um, I'm just pulling that out of my head. But decide how big you want it. Type in your dimensions and we could change this later so if you decide it's not quite what you want that's okay. And then we'll click on create. All right, so here's our canvas. And for this one, I'm mostly going to be using text. So I'll click on the text tool over on the left side. It looks like a T. And then I'm just going to click somewhere in the middle, and I'm going to type my text. So I will type the, and then I'm going to click somewhere else. Click again, and I'll create another text box. And this one I'm going to do Cahoons. Now, every time you want the text to be different, um, either another word or a different font or size, you need to create a new text box. I probably could have done these the same because they'll probably be similar. But I like to do them all separate. That way, if I want to manipulate one, change the size or the font, or whatever, then I can do that with each different text box. So the Cahoons, and we're going to create another box down here that is EST established, and I'll type in 2013. I think that's when I was married. Okay. So I'm done making text. I'm going to go back up here to the selection tool. It's the top arrow. Be careful, there's two arrows. There's the direct selection, which is different. So click on the selection tool. And let's start by making these. We'll, we'll put them together, the Cahoons, and I'm going to make them bigger. So I'm going to drag a box over them to highlight them. And then over on, for me, it's the right side. Um, depending on what version you have, it may be different. But I'm going to find the size here. And I'm just going to make it bigger. So I'm going to guess maybe 300. All right, that's bigger. They're kind of mixed up. OK, that was a little too big. Let's try 200. Here we go. OK, now that I've got these bigger, I'll move this one down and make it bigger as well. I'll do 100. Right, now that I've got them bigger, I want to pick a font. So I'm going to click on both of these because I'm going to make them the same font, the Cahoons. <clears throat> and you can come over here and you can choose any of these fonts in here. And there's some pretty good ones. But if you want to get really creative or you want to find some really cool fonts, then I'm going to show you another place to find them. If you open up your web browser, Google Chrome, and go to dafont.com, dafont.com. <clears throat> and here it is. When you get to dafont, you have a bunch of options up here for types of text. I'm going to I'm going to pick let's do curly. So I'll click on curly right here. And you can see there's some curly fonts. 
If you want to see what yours will look like, then you type it into this box here. So we'll type in the Cahoons, and I'll hit Submit. And there we go. I get a, pre a preview with each different type of text, each style. And I can pick one that I like. Let's scroll down. I want something curvy but readable. Uh, let's try this one right here. So Baby Bunny Script. I want to try that. So I'm going to go over to the right side and hit Download. And you can see down here at the bottom of my browser it's downloaded. So I'll click on Baby Bunny Script. And it's going to pop up this window. Now to be able to use this, I need to install it. So I'm going to double click on this. And if there's multiple files here, find one that says .ttf or I think there's another file type. Um, maybe different, but you're going to find one like this. Double click it and click on install. Okay, that font is now installed on the computer. So I can exit out of these folders, go back to Adobe Illustrator. Now, when I select these and search for a font, I should be able to find that font, Baby Bunny Script, right here. Okay, and I can make it whatever size I want. I still need to adjust these because they're not really where I want them. You can use the arrow keys to bump them up and down, left and right. Let's make them a little bit bigger. Okay, maybe 280. Okay, that's good enough for now. And then this one down here, I'm going to pick another font. We'll do this one, Big Noodle Titling. Okay. Then we could just leave it like that. Um, and you don't have to do it this way. If you could do a completely different sign with different text, um, different design, different, you know, you could arrange them how you want. But for this one, I want to add a couple shapes, a couple lines around the established date. So I'm going to go up and click on this rectangle tool. And if you want to use one of the other shapes, you can hold down and you can see you can find an ellipse polygon tool, star tool, line segment tool. I'm going to keep the rectangle tool. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle right there. And you could draw another one on the right side, but to make sure I'm consistent, I'm going to go back to my selection tool. I'm going to copy, so control C will copy that. And then control V will paste it. And I'm just going to grab that and drag it down here. So it's the same size. And you can move these around, you can lengthen them, you can change them however you want. Okay, so the Cahoons established 2013. All right. Now, this isn't probably perfectly how I want it, but I'm going to I'm going to leave it for now. By the way, if you want to resize something this way, you can click in the corner and drag, but you need to be careful. You can see it changes the proportions of your text. If you want the proportions to stay the same, hold down shift while you do that. You can see now they stay the same. And if you want them to stay centered as well, hold down alt. And now they stay, stay centered and they keep their proportions. So just another trick. If you want to scroll around this canvas to see what you're doing, hold down alt and then scroll with your mouse. And wherever you put your mouse, that's where it will scroll to. And then if you don't hold down Alt and you click down on the scroll button. Oh, just kidding. Different program. That doesn't work here. Okay. So I like that. We'll go with it. Now at this point, once you decide what you like and you get it to this point, you're going to select the text, just the text, not the rectangles. And I'm going to right click on them and hit Create Outlines. Now what this does is it creates a shape out of the text. 
right now the computer recognizes this as text that you can type and you can edit but when we go to cut it on the laser we want we just want it to be a shape that it cuts out it doesn't care that it's text it's just a shape to the laser so we're going to right click on the text and and select create outlines and now it's no longer text i can't edit it and change what it says it's just a shape and you can see where if you're using a cursive font you can see that each individual text each each letter is an individual shape it's not actually one continuous word like you thought it was and where these overlap we don't want the laser to go in and cut those shapes out because then the pieces are going to fall apart so to fix this while it's still highlighted you're going to go over here to your pathfinder and you're going to click to unite so you want any everywhere where it's overlapping it's going to just blend them together and make one solid piece so now you can see those individual pieces disappeared and now it's just one continuous shape okay there's one last thing we need to do before it's ready for the laser we've left it in black so that we can see what it looks like but to get this ready for the laser to cut I'm gonna select everything I'm gonna go over here to the fill double click or single click sorry and you're gonna select none no fill okay so there's it's just empty white space and then for the stroke I'm gonna click and make the stroke 0.1 Okay, so now if we click off of it, you can see really lightly those outlines there. They're only 0.1 of a pixel, I don't know. Point, they're, they're really thin. This tells the laser, when they're this thin, it tells the laser that we need to cut those shapes rather than engrave them. If you leave them thick or leave them black, it's just going to engrave this. It's not going to cut it out. We want to cut this out, and then we're going to apply it to another piece. So... You're actually going to have to run this twice on the laser. The first time, you're going to do it with thin material, and you're going to cut through it so that you have these individual pieces. The second time, you're going to get the board that these will lay on, and you're going to engrave it into the board so that you can see exactly where they go. Otherwise, when you go to glue these on, if you don't have that laid out on there, good luck trying to get them lined up. It's just not going to happen. So... Make sure you do that twice. Engrave it on your board so you can see exactly where they line up. And that's about it. I do want to show you one more thing. Uh, let's say you wanted to do a logo instead of just text. Or you want to find a picture, some simple clip art online that you want to cut out instead. I'm going to show you how you can do that. So you're going to pull up a window on your browser. And you're going to search for something. So let's say I want to do, I don't know, let's do an elk. Now if I just type in elk and go to images, I'm going to get photographs of elk. It's probably not going to work very well if I want to cut this out. So instead, I'm going to type in, I'm going to use lo words like logo or clip art or silhouette. Those words are going to get me a really simple image. So let's try logo. Elk logo. Here we go. Here's some simple images. So now let's say I like this one here. I'm going to take this, right click on it. By the way, these numbers down here in the corner of the image tell you how big it is. The bigger it is, the better this is going to work. If you have a really low quality image, it's just not going to work out very well. Okay, so I'll right click on it, select Save Image As. And you can rename it if you want, so it's easier to find. I'm just going to hit save. And here it is down here in the corner. I will click on that. I'm going to drag it into Adobe Illustrator. Maybe. It's not going to let me. Okay. So that's okay. We can still do it. I'm going to click on my folder. Here it is um, under quick access, or you can go to your download folder and find it. I'm going to drag it and drop it onto Adobe Illustrator. And then I need to resize it. Remember when you resize it, hold down shift, 
to keep the proportions. Okay. We'll just put it up here in the corner for now. And right now this is a pixelated image, meaning it's made up of little dots or squares. If I zoom in, you can see all those little squares that make up this image. It looks sharp when I'm out here, but it's not. It's just dots, just squares of color. So I need to turn this into vectors, which are mathematically defined lines. Something that the laser can follow. It can't follow squares. If I wanted to cut this out, it's just looking at dots on a paper. So to change it to vectors, you're going to find the button that says image trace. And the image has to be selected or you won't see it. Make sure it's selected. Click on image trace. And for this one, you can pick different modes here. I'm going to select black and white logo. And now it is traced. If I zoom in on this image, remember hold down alt and zoom with the mouse. If I hold it down and zoom in, you can see there's no longer dots or squares. It's just solid lines. And they're perfectly straight no matter how far I zoom. Okay, so it's converted it to a vector. Now sometimes when you do this, especially if you have a low quality image, it's going to distort things and it won't look the same. If you want to mess with it and try to fix it, you can come over this, there's a little button. If you hover over it, it says open the image trace panel. So we're going to click on image trace panel. Pulls up this box. I'll drop down the advanced tab. And you can play with all these sliders to get it looking more how you want. Now mine looks pretty good, so I'm not too concerned about it, but you can play with these, play with these sliders. And then I would suggest you also select the ignore white box. <clears throat> and that makes it so that all the white that was around that image is now gone, and all we have left is just these black lines. And to see what I'm talking about, let's drag this off. If I don't click ignore white, you can see it's surrounded by white. If I do, there's no white. It's just that black image. Okay, once you get it how you like, exit out. Um, if you want to edit it, like let's say it had some words down here that you didn't want, you could click over here on expand. And now it's just a shape, just like all the other things on here. And if you wanted to get rid of some text or delete something or whatever, then you could click individually. Now to be able to select an individual piece, you have to double click on the image, which opens it up. Then you have to single click to select that piece, and you could delete it. Now I'm going to do Control Z because I don't actually want to delete that. Okay, and then you can double click out of it when you're done. And we could select this, and I could put it somewhere. Hold down Shift to keep the proportions. I don't know. Yeah, I could even put it behind there if I want. But that's how you do it if you wanted to do something, a logo or some other shape instead of just text. And then, of course, remember, once you get it to this point, we also need to get rid of the fill and change the stroke. Oops. Change the stroke to 0.1 if you want it to engrave. Or, sorry, if you want it to cut it out rather than engrave it. Okay, so that's ready to go. All right. Good luck.